considering the historical tale that served as the film's inspiration. The Boston Strangler conclusion could raise more questions than it does answers. The two female reporters who broke the news of someone killing largely alone elderly ladies in Boston in the early 1960s are the focus of a new true crime film. When more women are slain, some of whom deviate from the killer's initial method of operation, the case gets increasingly complicated. In the end, Boston Strangler postulates that several murderers were responsible for the atrocities. The two women who covered the story for the Boston Record American newspaper, Loretta McLaughlin and Jean Cole, are at the center of the real crime tale in the Boston Strangler movie. Once Albert DeSalvo admits to the crimes, it appears that their work is over, but not all of the information is accurate. DeSalvo is assassinated in jail immediately after agreeing to meet with Loretta. Nevertheless, in her concluding essay, Boston Stranglers, she makes the assertion that DeSalvo wasn't the only murderer. The Boston Strangler ends with Loretta drinking at a pub with Jean while appearing thoughtful, leaving the audience with a lot of unanswered concerns. Were the Boston Strangler articles by Loretta true? The Boston Strangler's narrative was first reported in the record American by Loretta McLaughlin and Jean Cole. McLaughlin also gave the serial killer's moniker, which would serve as an inspiration for future Strangler aliases in both reality and fiction. The majority of the stories by McLaughlin and Cole that were included in Boston Strangler on Hulu, including two female reporters study Strangler, were true. However, it appears that McLaughlin's last Boston Strangler's piece was made up to give the story a more dramatic conclusion. Eddie Corsetti and other record American writers also covered the Boston Strangler tales, and Jean Cole also contributed some of her own articles. When McLaughlin departed the record American in the 1960s, Cole remained to write on DeSalvo's life at least until 1967. After DeSalvo's brief jailbreak, she penned girls, keep doors locked till DeSalvo again in prison, but it wasn't published in Boston Strangler. The Boston Strangler was not connected to the Michigan murders. Unexpectedly, the first murder of Boston Strangler takes place in 1965 before the action shifts to Boston in 1962. Later, when Detective DeLine contacts Loretta regarding a potential connection to the Boston Strangler, the real crime narrative of the Michigan murders is revisited. This appears to be an allusion to the so-called Michigan murders, which took place between 1967 and 1969. Although the Boston Strangler compares the Michigan murders to his own crimes, there is no confirmed connection between the two. Although there are some parallels, such as the use of stockings to strangle several of the victims, John Norman Collins was the perpetrator of the Michigan murders. Boston Strangler just cited the Michigan murders to demonstrate that, regrettably, comparable atrocities have always occurred and would continue to do so. George Nassar still behind bars. Before the Boston Strangler closing credits, it is shown that George Nassar, who was found guilty of murdering Dominic Kermel in 1948, is still incarcerated in Massachusetts. In the real crime film, a neighbor of one victim names Nassar as the likely murderer rather than DeSalvo. While it has been claimed that Nassar was incarcerated at the time of the killings and so could not be the Boston Strangler, in reality he was on parole from 1961 to 1964, which coincided with several of the murders. In 1964, while on the lam, Nassar murdered Irvin Hilton, the proprietor of a Texaco station. He and DeSalvo ended up in jail together after this. Nassar is now being held at the Massachusetts Correctional Institution shortly after being given a life term in prison in 1967. He has repeatedly asked for a new trial, but has been turned down. He is one of the few Boston Strangler murder suspects that is still alive and is presently 90 years old. Theoretically, the Boston Strangler never got captured. There are several hypotheses about the unsolved crime of the Boston Strangler. While Albert DeSalvo admitted to the killings, his statement was questioned. It had contradictions, and Boston Strangler raises the possibility that Nassar and Daniel Marsh may have guided him. There were many more suspects besides Marsh, who is a key figure in the Boston Strangler. According to the conclusion of the Boston Strangler, many individuals may have truly been responsible for the killings. Nonetheless, no one was ever found guilty of the killings, and since the 1960s, there have been no significant suspects. Yet in 2013, genetic proof allowed DeSalvo to be definitively connected to Mary Ann Sullivan's homicide. Thanks for watching, and if you are new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.